if you think about sort of, I guess, legacy estates, legacy environments, you know, organizations invest so much in tools for visibility and monitoring, making sure you can capture everything about applications, uh, connectivity, networks, users, infrastructure, and so on. And all of that's complex enough when it's all within your control, all within your estate. As you start to lose some of that, you know, applications largely being in cloud and SaaS, um, networks becoming largely reliant on, on internet and various other forms of transport, and the fact that users no longer always work from an office, those tools start to become much less relevant, much less uh, effective. Um, so much of the control over that goes away with, with that environment. So investing in next generation tools that are built for cloud, built for SaaS, or essentially built for a, a hybrid of everything is kind of what's relevant. And I think that's where the industry is changing and, and vendors like ourselves are trying to evolve our solutions and products to make sure that we're as relevant for our customer base as, as we always have been you know, during that migration towards cloud. And I think also, as again, as consumers, we are expecting things to be available all the time. You know, we're not forgiving of there being downtime or poor performance. So having the visibility of the performance and being able to actually identify where there is an issue potentially mm -hmm. and troubleshoot that effectively to get the resolution as quickly as possible is, is becoming more and more critical. It's, it, it no longer is it acceptable for you to say, oh, sorry, systems are down. We just don't accept that as consumers. Yeah, and it's a good question because there's two sides to that. There is the, you know, how does technology relate to, um, you know, a business plan around, you know, investing in technology, digital transformation and so on. Often it can be a little bit back to front from a perspective of investing a complete new IT strategy on one side without, you know, understanding what the impact is going to be to the legacy environment or the hybrid environment. So you get this kind of mix between evolving legacy into that notion of cloud first or cloud native and then also working backwards of you know what starts with cloud and how do you make that sort of go backwards if you like to sort of you know integrate with with the legacy kind of environment so there's two sides of that story i would say would you think oh, absolutely absolutely that that is um the key challenge is, is that migration from, from one side to another or the, the, what's going to be the longer term ecosystem to be able to have visibility across both sides. Yeah, I think there's, um, you know, cloud by default, everybody has this notion that cloud is on the user's doorstep. And that's kind of the first mistake. You know, if you look at Office 365, there are immense amount of um, opportunities and improvements um, and, and ways to move the business forward using technology like that. But at the same time, you have users, whereas if your Office 365 tenant is based in Europe, for example, that's great for your users that are based in Europe. But for the same users that might be based in Asia or, or, or Africa or, or even in the US for that matter, you now have that notion of distance, you have latency, you have all kinds of challenges related to, to connectivity and, and security. And that kind of gets forgotten or it becomes kind of a secondary thing which needs to be addressed. So, you know, what the industry is trying to do, um, again, is sort of evolve technologies that were relevant for similar challenges in the past, but make them relevant in the, in the era of cloud. And that's what we've spent years, um, you know, doing with our customer base and our technologies as well. So absolutely, you have you know the Office 365 or any you know, one of the mainstream um, SaaS applications, but also where you have organisations migrating from more premise-based infrastructure data centres into ultimately new data centres, but what we'd call cloud data centres. Um, that's a big challenge in itself. How do you a map how those applications are actually uh, configured across the servers to to the new world? Um, that's, a, that's a huge challenge to actually do those sort of migrations. And it doesn't really matter what sector you're in. If you are looking to make those changes, then the tooling is key. I think the work, from a cultural perspective, the worst thing to ever feel like is if you, you're the neglected part of a business. If you're headquartered in one part of the, of the world and you're, you, you work in a branch in a smaller part of the business and you're not getting the same, the same experience as the head office is, that relevant where you are in the world is going to, is going to cause a, a cultural challenge because you're made to feel like you're, you're a second-rate citizen to a certain extent. So I think, you know, one thing that actually unites us globally is we expect to be treated as the priority. And, and that's where I think the key thing is to understand is consistency of delivery, that it doesn't matter who you are, where you are, and we expect that. And, you know, the globalization of of industry, of, of us as consumers, that has been a great level playing field really that we all expect that now. And I think that's really the common, more of a commonality than a difference in culture. Mm -hmm.